If you're applying to dentistry in the UK, you may have noticed that over the last few years, it has actually become more competitive than medicine. Now, as somebody who's got into both medicine and then after that, I went on to a career in dentistry and got into King's College, which is probably the most competitive course that you can get into. I have been teaching people for a long time now how to optimize their application. The first thing that's really important is getting outstanding work experience. Now, work experience comprises three things. So that is shadowing where you go in and observe. So ideally that would be either in a dental practice or maybe in a hospital where you go like into a dental hospital where they're doing some of the maybe more involved procedures there. The second thing is volunteering where you're showing that you have the ability and the desire to care for people and that's really important to show that you'll give back to the community and are the kind of person that will go on to be a good dentist. Finally, the third area of work experience is paid work. Now in paid work, unlike the other two where really, you know, if you're shadowing, you're just a fly on the wall or maybe in volunteering where you're not necessarily relied on to be there. When you have a paid job, they are relying on you. You have the responsibility to be there and you have some duties as well. It could be handling money. It could be having the keys to lock up. It could be dealing with customers. These are all things that when you're applying and you want to show that you're the kind of person that would make a great dentist, they want to see these sorts of skills demonstrated. So a paid job is equally and really useful for showing that and demonstrating that when you apply. If you want to find out more about exactly how to get the, the best kind of work experience, you can check out this video here where I've gone into those things in much more depth. In fact, this entire channel is dedicated to dentistry and medicine applications, which is what we do at FutureDoc. So if you want to keep up to date with all the latest and basically have your finger on the pulse of what's happening in the application news, check out our website where you can sign up to the newsletter or you can subscribe to the channel and hit notifications to make sure that you don't miss out on any important information that could affect your chances of getting in. Equally under work experience, we have the extracurricular section. So this is where you are demonstrating traits of what would make a good dentist. So this could be anything from leadership if you are the captain of a team or maybe dedication if you've been playing an instrument for a long time. Even things like if you arrange summer research experience. There are lots of things that we work on with our students to basically make sure that you separate yourself from the crowd and just make sure that you stand out in a sea of applications. The second element that's really important is the aptitude tests. Now, those are pretty much all the UCAT unless you're applying to Leeds, which is the BMAT. However, as of October 2023, that'll be the last ever sitting of the BMAT where I assume Leeds will adopt the UCAT, but that is yet to be decided. So pretty much for every wannabe dentist, you will be sitting the UCAT. UCAT. Now the UCAT is simultaneously overvalued and underestimated. Now what do I mean by that? Well basically every year we get people who come to the FutureDoc program because they didn't get in the year before when they applied to dentistry and they can't understand why they, they got a good UCAT score and that they didn't get a place. Now getting a good UCAT score is really really important but when they think of a dental application they're thinking of everything as a whole. Now I'm training my students to say look we are preparing for your interview now because when they get to interview, they want to see the full package. They don't want to see somebody who's just got a good UCAT score. They want to see all of these elements done to a high level that we're going to discuss here. Now, the next element is making sure that you write a really outstanding personal statement that gets you invited to interview, but also sets the tone for how your interview goes. Now, the personal statement is used differently by different universities, but that doesn't mean that you shouldn't pay attention to it because what it will do is really help you demonstrate just why you're a great candidate and also really show off some of that amazing work experience that you've built in the past. Even if the university doesn't use your personal statement to select you for interview, a lot of the time, you know, I and other interview panelists I know for sure will use the personal statement at interview to pick things to ask you about. Now this is where I talk about the application being an all-encompassing thing and you can really set the tone for the interview based on what you write in your personal statement. You know, when I'm interviewing people, what do I do? I flick through their personal statement, look for standout things and use that as fuel for questions to ask when I'm interviewing. The pro move with this is to actually set the tone already before you've even got to interview. And you do that by how you write your personal statement, but also some hooks that you lay. I will read personal statements and I know that I'm going to ask a question about it. So with my students, when I'm helping them and going through their personal statement with them, I 
deliberately lay out some things that I know they're going to ask questions about that you can be comfortable speaking about at interview and then you can almost know and prepare a really solid answer so that you can really smash that at interview knowing that it's coming. The next really important thing is choosing the right dental schools for you. This is a very individual thing and something with my students that will spend hours selecting because you can get the two exact same students, you know, similar UCAT scores, similar experience, similar grades and one will get maybe four interviews and four offers, one will get zero. And it's down to choosing the right university that suits your individual strengths. And then of course, the final stage is interviews. So really the way to do well at interview is a few things. The first thing is you need to get your knowledge to a very good level so that you aren't pretending and trying to blag it, you are looking like the real deal. This also comes back to your work experience so that when people ask you to reflect on some experiences, you're not just leaning on one or two things but you're pulling from a wealth of experience and you're very relaxed because you have lots of stuff that you're not trying to remember it will just come to you because you've lived it but the final and most important thing that i work very hard on preparing my students for is being prepared but not rehearsed rehearsed is when you have pre can spiel and you kind of crowbar those things into scenarios that don't fit or questions that aren't quite right. Whereas when you're well prepared, it means that you know the points that you want to say, you can rely on your own knowledge, and then you can adapt those things, the points that you want to say to the question based on the context and the way that it was asked. And that is the difference between an okay student and an outstanding one that is going to get an offer. And if you want to find out more about interview stuff, I recommend that you check out this playlist here. Now, the most important thing that ties all of those five steps together is that you need to start with a really good strategy. You need to plan out the dental school application understand the timings and if you want to go to our website you can sign up to the newsletter where we'll keep you up to date with everything also there are some free resources where you can get a free timetable to keep on track of this but really the very first thing i do with my students that join the program is we sit down and map out all of these five steps how are we going to smash each one how are we going to allow the time to prepare for each one so that it's not stressful and it's very calm and organized so that we can just do things very methodically and make sure that we maximize the points available for each of those single areas and that is why our program is so successful if you want to have a look at that program and see how we help people check out that out here otherwise have a look at some other videos on the channel to help you get into dental school but otherwise i'll thank you for watching and best of luck with your application and hopefully see you in one of those videos